Grief is an issue that touches all of us at one point or another. David Knapp knows this firsthand. The devastating loss of two wives affected him and his family, but his book, I Didn't Know What to Say, highlights some of the things that people said to him that weren't so great, and also he can advise us what you should to say to someone who's undergoing loss. David Knapp, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, we're in beautiful New York City at the National Publicity Summit, and you're here to talk about this book, I Didn't Know What to Say. Could you share part of the story of how you dealt with not one, but two losses? Right. My first wife died of breast cancer, and I was devastated because I had no experience with the grieving process. Everything was a shock to me. And then when my second wife died 20 some years later, um, I knew what I was going through and it was a very difficult experience because I knew how much I would have to hurt in order to heal. Now David, trauma affects many people in, in many different ways and in addition to the loss of someone through a death, we can lose a job or lose a pet or there are many different ways that people are affected by grief. In your case, as a man, how is it different for you than, and, and where could you find help? That was one of the challenges for me, especially after my first wife died. I realized after two or three months, I needed to talk. I just needed to talk out the issues, and I didn't find anybody. I went looking for other people who had gone through that. And so as a man, commonly it's either talking it through or actually doing something. Um, whether in my case I wrote articles, I put photo albums together, doing something to m commemorate the, my loss. Now not to pick on anyone of course, but what were some of the things that people said to you that just made your jaw drop? That you, and you're thinking, did I really just hear that? Yeah. Commonly some of them had to do with comparing my loss with something they've experienced like, uh, you know, I know exactly how you feel I've had a loss before too really you don't know how I feel or, or even bringing some theological point into it that really I wasn't in a position I didn't need to be lectured about theology I just needed somebody to empathize I'm hurting and you know that's interesting because what someone is trying to say maybe they mean well but you just needed someone to hear you correct and commonly that's what I found looking backwards many people respond based on where they're at where they're coming from they would say something based out of their uncomfortableness with the loss with no thought about me you know and you mentioned you had a hard time finding resources for you not even because of what you had gone through but even as a man what what would you advise people who are going through a loss like this especially a man what direction should they look to find help? Commonly it would be a matter of sometimes it's timing, uh, being, being available to someone to talk to them after the fact. Yes, at the time of loss, whether it be a divorce or a, a job loss or a death, they conversation, but oftentimes it's like later, uh, the, the three week period, the three month, even six months later, be there, just bring the conversation. I had men call me up take me for a walk after my second wife, best thing they could have done. Mm -hmm. And you know, they say, they say that men try to fix things and women just want to vent. But what, we really need to get past that because you did need to talk. You needed someone to hear what you were saying. What was the most helpful thing that people did other than calling you like two, three weeks or two, three months afterwards? After my first wife died, I remember I would have given anything if someone would have just asked me, not just how are you doing, but what was it like when, when your wife died? Nobody did. Wow, really? Because in our society, whether we're trying to be polite or sometimes we don't know how to talk about feelings, so we avoid that, but people didn't ask you, and that seems very simple. Right. So in your book, I Didn't Know What to Say, you do offer very helpful and practical tips for people who, uh, well, exactly like the title said, to help them know what to say in an uncomfortable and difficult situation. What happened after my second wife died, I had several people, because it was second time for me, several people come up to me and says, Dave, I was gonna write or send you a note, but I didn't know what to say. And I thought, 
Well, I do. I know what to say. I want to help people. And so, yes, the book has, at the, at the end of each chapter, there's a half a dozen, say this instead of this. Can you give us an example? Uh, one example would be with dealing with children. Instead of saying to a child, oh, grandpa's just sleeping, or somehow lying to them about the whole, the whole process of death, be honest that, you know, that he's, his, he's died and he won't be coming back mm -hmm. and be truthful with them. Uh, another one, of course, would be a matter, you know, there's a simple one everybody does, and that's, some, well, they're in a better place. Really? I'm the one that's hurting. They're okay, maybe, but I'm hurting. Why are you talking about them? I'm the one that needs the help. And you are still here. That's correct. Now, you mentioned the, the, that you had to deal with children. What was the family situation like with your first wife and then also with your second wife? Okay, that was part of the challenge. My first wife, I had four children, ages uh, 16 down to 11, and I had to go pick them up at school and bring them home and break the news, mommy just died. Uh, the second, my second wife, we were at a different phase of life, and we had blended eight teenagers, and they had children, so there was 24 grandchildren. So not only did I have all the, the my kids and their spouses, but all of the grandkids came to say goodbye. And many times the grandchildren wept the deepest in grandpa's arms. I think many people who are watching and listening can identify with this because we all remember when a loved one of ours has passed away or uh, maybe someone is dealing with a person who has a chronic illness. Um, when you were, at, when, as a widower, when you met your second wife initially, did you think, oh gosh, do I want to try this again? Or were you happy and relieved to meet a new partner? One of the keys to being able to love again, which is a lot of what people are asking many times, is to grieve well. And I knew that from my first experience. I had received good counsel from another man who had gone through loss. He says, you want to embrace the grief and grieve it well so that you can be, be whole on the other end. And I did that, so I knew I would, needed to do that again. So I, I believe I had, and it, for me it was a nine month period of time afterwards that I had grieved well, and I knew when I was ready uh, to love again, and I did that. When you found out that your second wife had fallen ill, what went through your mind? I actually, it's like, here I go again, uh, kind of a reluctance. But at the same time, um, I just began to actually spend a lot of time meditating on, this is really going to hurt. This is going to take time. And then my, my thinking about the logistics and getting the family together, my immediate one was, okay, I've got to help the family deal with this also. David, you've experienced so much about grief, but getting through the grief and so people can live again and have full lives and you actually do seminars to help people and companies uh, deal with this kind of a situation. What could people expect from one of your seminars? One of the things that I find my, my drive is to help teach people how to help. So there will be benefit to people who, have got, who are going through the grieving process to attend one of my seminars. However, my objective will be to teach everybody else how to understand and help that person, whether it be loss due to death or loss for other situations such as job loss, divorce, pets, or whatever. And everyone can come away with, with a list of how-tos, list of what to say, and even a schedule of how to help someone long-term. That is fascinating, and that is so practical. So you pretty much have a guidebook, not only for people who are going through loss, but people who are in charge of people going through loss, so we don't get stuck and we don't stay stuck. Right. David, you have a tremendous amount of material. Your book, I Didn't Know What to Say, is available on your website. How can someone reach you to book you for a seminar or to find out more about your book? Of course, you can always contact me through the 800 number that's across the screen, or it, you can get a hold of me through our webpage, which is griefreliefministries.com. The book's available on Amazon as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, David. My pleasure. <laughs>